Hey, what's up everyone? And welcome back to this week's Weekly D where I have the lovely Tara Margulies on with me and we are gonna be talking about the life of an influencer because this influencing shit be hard, I tell you that now. So without further ado, this is the Weekly D because honey, if you ain't getting your D on the daily, you better at least be getting it once on the weekly. If you're not getting any and you want some tea, then come and join Dan up on the Weekly D. It's the Weekly D. Hey Tara, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast today. I'm super excited to chat with you. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I'm really well. The sun is shining. So yeah, happy days. What's- well, actually, what's the weather been like today? Because we had the weirdest like storm earlier. It was miserable. Yeah. We had hail. Did you have all yeah. that as well? <laughs> Not quite hail, but we've had a load of rain, and now it's really sunny. And I don't know. I was at a, at a wedding in Devon this weekend, and we got beautiful weather. So that was that was really lucky. <laughs> oh god, that was so lucky, especially considering the weather we had today. So oh, that's yeah. good then. Well, we're here today to talk about social media. This is going to be just a podcast all about social media, and we're going to be going in some depth. But our main focus for you today was to talk about kind of influencer marketing, talking to you about some of the stuff that you do, um, talking about your businesses as well, like and your business that you created, and just talking to you about some cool things like that. So, but to get started, before I ask you any questions, I just like people to have a moment just to tell us a little bit about yourself, just for anyone who's listening to this, maybe they aren't following you yet and they're starting to follow you now. What do they need to know about Tara? Okay, well, I did an engineering degree at university and hated every single second of it. So, (laughs) yeah, as soon as I left, I thought, okay, let's try some other stuff. Am I allowed to swear, by the way, because I swear all the time? So, okay, good, fine. Um, (laughs) And so I ended up at a startup, a running startup, and um, did their marketing for them for like for a couple of years. Also, I had absolutely no experience whatsoever, and I was just, I just liked running at the time. So I thought, okay, this could, this could be a good job. Let's go. And then I left that and I started freelancing for all sorts of different companies, mostly in the fitness industry. And then, then managed to understand how social media marketing and influencer marketing worked. At the same time, I was building up my own socials, just sort of accidentally. I was just, doing fitness things in London and people liked following along. So I got invited to influencer events, met a load of different creators and people, which was great because I made some really good friends and also um, realized that there was money to be made on both sides of this equation. So I then ended up starting my own social media agency. When was that? That must've been maybe 2017 which ran for five years or so. We had all sorts of different clients, um, all the way from a, a company that made the, the big containers that you put into an airplane that stuff goes into. So, you know, your yeah, bags yeah. just get thrown into the hold in a plane. It's like they put get put into a, a big contraption. Anyway, we just <laughs> the marketing for that and um, marketing for CBD companies, for, for example. So all sorts of stuff, um, hired a little team, had a really good time, did a lot of influencer marketing from that side of the equation to help brands grow on socials and to help drive sales. And um, yeah, so that was what all happened happening. To that, what happened to that company? I think, so my business partner moved away. Uh, and started a master's degree, which left me to sort of deal with stuff on my own. And it wasn't, I realized, uh, we'll get a bit deep. I realized in myself that I don't want to grow a company um, and scale it up and keep making, you know, more and more money. And it just doesn't, it wasn't really it didn't set my soul on fire being like, right. so that, so essentially what happened was that there was no progression ever. And it was just a cute little company that ticked over and we all had a nice time, but it's very difficult in a big capitalist world to, to have longevity with that. So right. I wanted to go back to having less responsibility and shut it down and became freelance again. <laughs> 
Right, okay. So you still were doing that sort of work, it's just you were doing it more freelance rather than having a whole company for it. Yeah, exactly. So now I just work with brands on the brand side and also as an influencer to help brands by creating content. And when you first started the, um, sorry, I just realized, did you, was that the, was that the end or did you have more? I don't want yeah. to interrupt you. No, no, that's the end. That's, okay, that's the end. Fine, fine. So I just had a question because I, and if you ever see me looking down by the way, it's because I'm writing notes of things that I want to bring up. So I've met, just mentioned the agency, so I won't know what happened with that. But you mentioned um, that when you first started, you were doing some marketing for this running startup. Out of interest, is that running company still going or? I haven't checked, to be honest. Oh, okay. Um, it was small. Yeah, company, I haven't checked for it? a few years. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And um, had you, did you have a following at this point? Is that why they 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 like employed you, or they literally just thought, oh, you'll be good at marketing, you can? No, it was kind of it was an internship role. It was like, okay, um, you know, you look like the sort of target market, so you must understand our target market. So we'll teach you things, and you can learn on the job and you know, come and come and have a go and we'll pay you next to nothing. It was that sort of that that idea. Right. Okay, so you weren't immersed into the influencer life at this point. No. No. Do you like calling yourself an influencer? And I ask this because I know some people don't like the term. I've kind of come quite a long way with it. I used to think it was really cringe uh, and then realised that it's just a word right it's and actually it, i only found it cringe because other people would sort of look down on it and think oh you're an influencer you know and that wasn't that wasn't me that was that was like a projection of their own weird like misunderstanding of what it was that i did and all this kind of stuff so um decided to own it again i'm happy being called a creator an influencer like i don't i don't typically call myself an influencer but i'm not going to say i was oh, just no, about to say <laughs> yeah like what, so when someone says oh hey nice to meet you Taurus. what do you do what do you say <laughs> I just went through this at um, the wedding that I was at. I say that I'm a marketer <laughs> and because um, right. I mean, what I do now is I work in like the sex Smarting. work industry and, and, you know, with periods and menstrual cycles all day. So it's kind of like, mm, okay, <laughs> I'm a marketer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things, isn't it? It's like, it's just so much easier to say, oh, I work in marketing. Cool. End of discussion. It's like as well for me, like sometimes if I just don't really want this conversation to go anywhere, I won't tell them I'm a pole dance teacher. I just say, oh, I'm a fitness instructor. They're like, okay. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, and then that kind of just ends the conversation there. I'm just like, okay, thank God. But yeah, oh God, yeah. if you say like, can you imagine if you were like, well, you know, I work with like, I've got this period app. I also do work promoting sex toys, blah, 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 the sex positive app, all this sort of stuff that you do. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes all... it's it's really fun making people feel awkward on purpose. So yeah. uh, I do sort of whack it out occasionally. But anyway. <laughs> and but I was going to ask you how your parents feel about it. But obviously, before anyone else actually listens to this, I want them to know. So you, um, I don't, is it your app, the period app? Is the period tracking app? That's yours, is it? So it's not a period tracking app. It is um, a... It's a website where we've condensed all of the books that you can spend hours and days and months reading um, on menstrual cycles into a website where you can quickly digest right. all of that information. And also we have a forum that's uh, that's checked by doctors. So our community will write in questions or they'll share stories. I'll say, is this normal? Or, you know, what what can I do? Or just seek advice and and things like that so that's that's so the it's platform an education it's an educational, it's an educational platform. platform and for everyone yeah. listening it's called understand your cycle <laughs> please understand go and have a look cycle. so is that yeah. a website or is it an app as well it's a website at the moment nice and i'll, I'll only say uh, the only reason i haven't looked or been on it is because obviously i don't have periods so i should probably <laughs> won't really apply much to me Fair but, enough. Um, but yeah i've seen you promoting it and you know i want to talk to you about the way you promote it and stuff because i think it's great and so you have that and then i noticed you've also done some you know again promotional stuff for like sex um sex companies there was one it wasn't a sex toy company. I comment. It was like, um, it was again like an educational, like a sex education type. Uh, what was it called? Yeah. Remind me. It's educated. 
yes, that's the one. And it teaches people how to explore their sexual energy and stuff. I love yeah. that. Like how how did you get into working with brands like this? Do you do you have an agency that says, oh, we've got someone who's more than happy no. to work with these sorts of companies? Like, no? Well, what happened was about, I think, four or five years ago now, I just started talking about sex on Instagram and I think it was pretty early and nobody, nobody was really doing that. And I realized that I was getting so much traction because of it. So I thought, okay, well, you know, let's, let's go, let's keep doing this. And brands started noticing, I started tagging brands as well. People would ask me what my favorite sex toys were or like, you know, what, what companies I could recommend and things like that. So I started tagging them. And because you are not allowed to advertise sex related products and services on Meta, they can't spend any money on Facebook advertising on, on any sort of advertising, which means they have a lot of budget for influencers, which is excellent. <laughs> so, amazing, yeah. um, yeah, which is great. So I've worked with quite a few of them, and also the I mean the, the pool of people that you can that that you can employ to promote your products is smaller just because of you know the nature of it. Obviously, I mean it's getting bigger now, which is cool. It's good to see. It's good to see more people just being open and you know happy to talk about it. But yeah. And how? Because um, you are married, aren't you? You've been married. How mm -hmm. long have you been married for? Almost a year. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and like, how does he? How does he feel about it? I assume. Do you ever talk about your actual sex life, or do you talk it more generally? Like how, like how comfortable does he feel, or does he ever watch you like talk, hearing him, hearing you like talking about him, and he's like, "Oh my god, stop talking about this." Well, he's he's an incredibly private person, and um, there was only once. So I used to have a podcast with my friends Lucy and Sarah, and we used to be really open and just chat absolute shit about everything. And he was listening to one episode once and he then said to me afterwards, he was like, Tara, not, not like our personal details of, of, of us having sex, please. Anything else, fine. <laughs> but there's a few things that I'd quite like, you know, not, I don't want 10,000 people on the internet to know, please. I was like, okay, fine. That's fine. Right. That's fair. But for the, for, for the most part. I mean, I'll ask him when I think things are a bit, so I did, um, I recently did a, a campaign for a dating app and I just thought, you know what, I feel like he deserves the right, you know, to have some sort of input in this, you know, it's a bit weird. He was like, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's good. Well, it's work, isn't it? I guess it's different. Yeah. I mean, how, how did you get on with the whole promoting the dating app when you aren't single type thing? What approach did you go for with that? The idea with that was, I mean, I did tell them I was married and that I'd actually not used the app. Um, and they said to me, well, go off and find some friends who have. So I did. And I actually asked a few friends, like, you know, how did you get on with this? Do you still use it? And the feedback was generally quite positive. But um, they wanted to promote a new feature that they had in the app that was targeted to women so that they could filter people properly. And um, it was just a bit like just solving the problems that women have with apps being able to report people immediately there was just things things like that so they wanted me to to talk about that which i thought was pretty good so nice okay so you were more promoting the new features of safety for women i guess can you say yeah. what the app was pure app pure app nice cool well for anyone listening who yeah. wants an app that is very female conscious i guess it's worth mm -hmm. checking pure app out so you've worked with i mean we've literally talked about quite a few brands already i mean you've obviously worked with quite a lot of brands already so one of the things that we i really wanted to get into with you was how you started working with the brands in the first place so i assume you obviously created your following through your content and then do they contact you do you go to an agency do you well how does it work because i don't really do the influencer thing because I'm, I'm more of a mm -hmm. poll influencer and it's so different mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah it's more trying to get an insight into someone who does poll but actually does influencing outside of poll which is quite interesting yeah you've got to look at it as like a business essentially so I have a media kit that goes out to brands. So it's everything that you'd want to know as a brand, the following, the breakdown by gender, age range, locations, things like that. Um, 
some of the the posts that have worked really well for me, some of the brand campaigns I've done that have driven the most traffic, any numbers you can find like that, that prove that you're good at what you do and that, you know, you do things well and that your sort of style and that, that kind of thing. I put that together and um, I will either, it kind of depends on how much time I have at the moment. But when I first, when I first started, I just sent this out to lots of different brands. My friends were doing it at the same time as well. So I'd, they'd send me theirs and I could sort of copy a little bit or I'd send mine to people and, and we all started doing it. And um, that's how I met a few brands initially. Then some would come to me and say, we love your content. And um, I would then also have a little breakdown of, of costings. So for example, a reel is X amount, a reel plus three stories is X amount, um, right. you know, a TikTok. Like a price list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like anything. Right. So, um, and tailor it depending on the brand. If it's a massive brand, double it. Nice. If it's a small brand, if you really like the brand or if you, you know, you want to work with them again or something, go a bit lower. Um, I've, what I've learned is to go in high, um, and you can, you always have the final say at the end of the day. Right. So you can push them as much as you want. And then at the end of the day, when they say, we absolutely cannot go any higher than this, you can say, right, yes or yes or no, right? So don't be afraid to to go in high and see what happens. I mean, in the, um, in the pole industry, we have this thing with like performers, for example, where hmm. there's a lot of people just doing stuff for free or they're doing it super hmm. cheap. Is the same issue, are you having the same issue in the influencer world? Definitely. And it's, it, yeah, it's, it's pretty sad. I think in London now or in the UK anyway, we've got ourselves to a pretty good place where I've been working with brands trying to find influencers to promote things. And it's very, very rare to find somebody who will do something a free. Um, if they have less than like 10,000 followers and might do something for free, but even then, and, um, yeah, we've kind of got to a stage now where prices are, are pretty fixed and they're pretty high. But for example, in Australia, like you'll never get an Australian brand to pay you Americans as well. They just don't, they don't get it. So, yeah, it depends on where it depends where you are. I so guess Australian it's weird, isn't it? Won't, they won't pay. They're absolutely terrible. Oh my god, I got. <laughs> I'm not going to start name dropping polar brands, but some will contact you and be like, "Hey, so we really want you to do two reels, and we'll give you one set, and um, you've got to send it to us in this format." No, no, no. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. It's just thanks. It's but crazy. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like, it depends. Like, because I will do free stuff. I mean, when I say free stuff, I mean, I'll I'll take Hella Heels, for example. And I can say this because I was literally just talking to Harry about it today. Um, you know, mm -hmm. they'll send me a free pair of heels and she'll just be like, oh, you know, here's some heels. And she never says you have to do this, have to do this. But if people post, she sends them more, <laughs> you know? So she, she looks at, at the way of like, you know, these heels are not cheap. I'm going to send them free heels. If they mm -hmm. wear them a lot and they post us a lot and they tag us a lot, then absolutely. I'll just keep sending them free stuff. Yeah. And the ones that don't, they just don't do it again, which seems like yeah. a, a fair way to do it. I think with things like clothes, I mean, I always, I always say this one. I feel like I've said it so many times that I can just say the brand name. I always talk about dragonfly as an example, because dragonfly, mm -hmm. They pay very little for those items. I'm sorry, but they cannot be paying much for them. They look, they look like they must cost nothing from to order from China, and you know mm. they want so much. And I'm like, wow, like you're not, you're not going to pay even just like, just what twenty pound a post maybe? Just be like, oh, you know, do three posts, we'll pay twenty pound a post. It's a gesture. And I know you're probably like twenty pound a post, Dan. That's not anywhere near going to cover it. But I'm just talking. I mean, like, you might as well do it for free then. <laughs> right, but I mean, like to offer something. Like, do you know what I yeah. mean? It's like offer something to say nothing at all. It's just crazy to me. Here's yeah. Here's here's the unwritten rule: if you're gonna gift someone a product for free and you're not going to pay them, you have no control over where they, whether what they post. Nothing. I mean, I've had someone send me something, and then I've been like, this is terrible the packaging ter everything's terrible and then i just you know went off on them on stories and like you know gave them an absolutely scathing review it's like you have absolutely no control over what that person does with that product whether they even say anything whether their review is good like you just you're not allowed and so 
you know, if anybody, if a brand emails you and says, we're giving you this for free, but I want X, Y, Z, and here's a contract. No, absolutely no not. No way. Absolutely no way. Not. <laughs> it's just, I think it's no. crazy that people would expect that. You know, I have to say like, so I had a bad experience where someone had sent me something and was like, oh, can you post this or whatever? I was like, yeah, that's not a problem because I didn't want much. And at the time I was still quite new to it. So I was like, oh, wow, they want to send me something. And then it came through, it was hand gripping. It was so bad. And I was like, oh my God, this just does not work for me at all. And I literally semester and was like, I'm really sorry, but I'm just going to send it back to you because it isn't working for my hands at all. It's making them worse. I was like, they just, it's no good for me. They were like, oh, no worries, Dan, don't worry about posting it. But they were really chill about it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm not going to post anything and be like, oh, I'm not going to give them a bad review or anything because like, they just wanted my feedback on it. But yeah, it was yeah. So, so now whenever people are like, oh, we want to send you something or whatever, I'm like, I will post about it if I get on with the product. But if not, because I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about the possibility of me not liking the product. And has that ever happened to you? When Have you ever had any brands like that come to you and say, listen, we would love to work with you. We're going to pay you a shit ton of money, but the product is so shit. And you're like, I really can't promote this. I've had a few... I've never got to the stage where I've got a contract and they send me something and I'm like, no, I don't like it. Right. But I mean, I must turn down maybe about 30, 40% of the things that come through, even if they're paid, because if it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't fit, doesn't, the brand. doesn't fit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, God, I get like protein powders and all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, look, I'm not going to promote your shit. I'm just not. <laughs> right. And is there, is it more from a moral side of it or if you ever had any like where it's kind of just been like, you know, you've not, has there been any other reasons or is it just because it doesn't match kind of the brand that you're trying to represent, like, you know, the Tara brand? Yeah, if I'm not going to use it myself, then I'm just not going to promote it. Um, and I also think that people are smart and they will see right through me and you know, I know that and I don't want to, you know, I've spent so long creating this community and making content that the people who follow me love and I don't want to jeopardize that. Like why, you know, why, why would I? So I try to be really careful with the things that, that I accept. And that also then means that I'm, I'm, I want to charge more for the projects that I do take on because I'm declining so many it means others. More. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And it I don't know if this is too personal a question. I hope it's not. But I was just going to say, like, is this, like, the influencer life? Is it something that you can live off of, or do you have another job? I have lots of other jobs. But um, it depends. I mean, in January, I did a campaign that was five grand. And I was like, you know what? Amazing. <laughs> if I didn't do any more work this month, fine. It's all good, <laughs> But yeah. the minimum I will work for um, for a reel or a set of three stories or literally anything, the minimum that I will accept is a grand. So if you're going to pay me any less than that, unless you are literally a startup doing God's work, like, you know, the best thing I've ever seen in my life, then I might take right. it on. But other than that, but then some months I'll get zero and other months I'll get, so I think I wouldn't ever want to put all of my eggs in one basket with this because it is so volatile that it's just mm. not, it's not really, it's not really worth it. I, I don't know. But then, so UGC you wanted to talk about as well, right? So yeah. So can you tell everyone what that means? U, UGC. Yeah. UGC. Um, it's it stands for user generated content, and it is when a brand wants you to create content for them, but you deliver it to them and they post it to their socials and you don't have to actually post it. So the cool thing about that is if you love creating content, but you don't have a big following on a social platform, you can write to brands and say, Hey, like, you know, I'm, I love your mission and I'm a content creator. Here's the sort of stuff that I can make, or like I'm a, I'm a videographer or whatever it is and say, do you, do you need any UGC stuff being made. And I have a contract that I've had for, I think, 18 months now where I deliver eight videos a month for a, um, a brand's TikTok and they pay me a, like a regular contract fee, which That's is amazing. awesome. That, <laughs> that and, uh, and the influencer stuff I could live off. That's amazing. Maybe not in London, but. <laughs> 
Right. Of course, but obviously, because you're married, I guess obviously it's probably a little bit easier, right? Because you've got two yeah. incomes coming in. So, but living in London is is impossible for people, even with like non influencer jobs, where it's like regular money they're getting. It's crazy in London. I can't get yeah, that's mad. It. Where where are yeah. you? Central Central London, or are you a bit outskirts? Yeah, I'm in Camden, so I'm oh, wow. right so in the thick quite, of it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Oh, I love Camden though. Oh, Camden Market and all the food. Oh, I love it anyway. too. <laughs> um, oh, so you actually you actually live near to where the um, to where the old um, a colder pole used to be. What's it called yep. now? Ultimate Pole. That's the so one I actually I moved to Camden to be close to the studio. I wanted to walk to the studio. And that was like Amazing. six years ago or something. Uh, and yeah, long? and then just completely fell in love with the area. Now, how long's the walk here. now? Uh, the walk now, I'm slightly further. The walk now is probably about 20 minutes, but it used to be 10. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, sorry, where were we? We were talking about, um, so you had mentioned about a job that was five grand. And again, I know you mentioned you were happy to talk about money. So five grand, what are you doing for that? <laughs> like, I literally, literally made one video. Whoa. I made, I made one video, but so you can charge more for um for the rights to distribute the, that video further so when a brand comes to you and says i want um usage rights for ads then you can basically double your fee um and because they're yeah. then using that to pay do paid promotion i see okay yeah. so so you charge a different amount for that. So why is that more expensive out of interest? Well, I had a, my agent tried to explain this to me a little while ago, but you can't really, you can ask them how much money they're going to put behind it or how, you know, like where it's going to go and all that kind of stuff. But if they have the rights to just use it, your face could be all over the internet all over billboards, all over whatever it is that that they want to put you on. So that is, I mean, that just deserves a bigger fee. <laughs> and right, it's like okay. that with like modeling and all sorts of stuff as well. Like if your face is going to be on a massive billboard, you're getting paid like 10 times as much basically. Right. But, oh, I see what you mean. Because then they, so they could literally use your image to put on packaging, to put, they could use it for absolutely anything. Right. I see. Whereas if you're creating social media content, they can only put it on social media. Is that it? I see. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what, what brand was that for? You're allowed to say? No, I'm not going to. Sorry, I can't Don't tell you that. No, that's fine. That's fine. It was. It's but a big like, brand, though. That's cool. So, and how many yeah. of these these jobs that you're doing are for big brands? Are they are they big brands that we would know? Like, it depends. Um, it really it really fluctuates. Like, I've done I've done a few things for big brands but the big brands also tend to kind of go for massive influencers as well so right. it's relatively yeah. rare that you get a campaign from a big brand um I maybe a, like twice I a, a year friend. i have a well actually for a friend an old student um called lisa mm -hmm. she is like a fitness influencer her and her husband remain are like amazing they live in dubai now they've got like cool. millions of followers and stuff and i messaged her because i was just like at the time i was really intrigued i was like how much would you charge for this this gig and she was like telling me how much it was and it was thousands and i was like i was like oh, i was like, oh no i just mean like for the photo shoot she was like yeah she was like that's the price she was like that's without posting i was like whoa i was like really she was like yeah i was like okay i was like you're a bit out of my price range babe i was like but <laughs> i was like wow i, was like, I didn't realize because obviously in poll i don't know if you've noticed this like you know we don't seem to really know. I mean, I noticed essentially there was a post being shared around. Have you seen it by Blackstage? I saw that. Do you agree with those prices out of interest, or do you think they're too high, too low? If it, you can't, you 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 can't say for like a po for posting something for a brand that like you can't just have like one figure. It's what's your engagement right. rate? How much? You know, like it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Somebody with a hundred thousand, right. someone, someone like you with a hundred thousand followers and a, and a really good engagement rate, like you could, you could be asking for like three or four grand for a post. Whereas somebody that's got ten k followers and gets a few hundred likes per post, three or four k. Oh my god, yeah. fucking, babe, maybe I'm in the wrong game, you know? Because I tell you, I don't, 
I don't think I've ever charged anyone so much for a post. Like, I'm terrible. Like, I mean, on poll rolls, for example, to give you an idea, like we for for giveaways, right? And for giveaways, these people are gaining hundreds of followers. We charge like three hundred quid. Dude, <laughs> so no, <bad>. it's <laughs> absolutely so not. But, but the thing I will say is that people find that expensive. People think that's expensive because we're in such a small industry. That's where the argument is. So what is your thoughts on that? Yeah. So if the industry is smaller, do you charge different? Oh, hey, so sorry to interrupt your podcast. I just wanted to pop in really quickly to tell you about one of our sponsors. And today's podcast is sponsored by Ra Designs. Ra Designs is an activewear brand that create activewear for pole dancers and people doing alternative fitness, a.k.a. Aerial silks, aerial hoops, straps, you name it, they've got something for you. They've got a women's range, they've got a men's range. Woo! I love men's pole wear because it's so hard to find. And they've also got a whole range for women with curves. Can we talk about women with boobs? It's hard to keep these babies in, I hear, right? Well, Ra have got you covered. They have got a curvy girl range, which is going to keep you feeling supported and looking amazing. So please go and check out our sponsor for today. Thank you so much to Ra. We are so happy to have you on this podcast. Go and check out Ra Sides. Like if someone came to you and said, hey, um, we're, I'm trying to look for something in my room that's like really niche. I don't know, like we sell pens or I don't know, something like really niche. And you're like, okay, a small company. Do you charge less for that? Or are you like, well, I'm sorry, this is my price. It's really, yeah, I think the beauty of having a big audience and being able to charge big brands a lot of money is that if somebody came to me and was just like, I'm trying to make this work, I've got an awesome mission, I'm, you know, I'm self-funded, um, you know, or if it's somebody that I know as well, that's like sure. trying to get a business off the ground, I'll do things for free because I'm like, I know what it's like to be in your shoes. And I think what you're doing is awesome. And people do need, they need a hand and they need a leg up. So there's that side of it. But um, yeah, the Paul Instagram is most of it's sad, really. Like no one's, no one's earning enough money. So no. to expect someone to pay you that much when actually they're not earning that much because there's just not enough people buying their products. It's like, it just doesn't, it wouldn't sit, it wouldn't sit right with me either, really. I think so. the difficulty we have in poll is that no one's charging enough for anything. This is the issue, like poll classes are actually still relatively cheap. When you consider like how expensive like Reforma Pilates is, it's, I mean, in London, I remember looking at one, it was like 25, 30 pounds for a dropping class. And I was like, yeah. whoa, but really we are probably just as niche as that because we can't just cram people into a room. It's two per poll, right? We're not going to have more than that. And I think no one seems to be increasing their prices because students don't want to pay more, but realistically we should be increasing them. And the problem is, is that people can't increase them because the studio next to them isn't increasing their prices. So it's not like an industry standard thing. And it's the same with the clothing and stuff within Polo. Like a lot of the clothing, we're paying a lot of money for it because I guess because they maybe can't make it in bulk because, again, we're such a niche industry. So we're really stuck, I think, as an industry, and especially, like you said, with the influencer thing. Like, I mean, 300 quid, sometimes people are like, oh, it's quite a lot of money. I'm like, well, listen, I'm like, I'm not going to do it for less than that because it's not worth yeah. my time. But, yeah, um, yeah it's just I want to obviously help people out, but at the same time we've got to make some money on it, right? Otherwise it's just so much work for, for nothing. Yeah. I mean, what what do you think? Like if someone came to you, as a poll influencer, they've got, let's say 20,000, maybe 20 to 30,000 followers and a brand approached them saying, we'd love for you to make some content. How much would you say they should be charging for like say a reel that they've specifically created for that brand? It's, so these things are so tricky because <laughs> they would so probably, answer, what, what, what I think they should be charging is the sort of thing that the brand would probably go, no way, sorry. Like we just don't have that kind of money because they're not used to paying people and they yeah. also probably just don't have the money, right? Right. So I don't, I mean, I don't really know. Like with a normal- Like, like if, pounds or? No, God, no. Mo mo no. Thing is like that, that's not, that's not enough for like a normal, for an, for a normal brand like if it wasn't a pole specific brand so like if nike said hey um we've we're making this new like 
you know, track wear that you could wear on the pole or something like that, or street wear, and we'd really want like different people promoting it. Or didn't Nike do something with pole dancers recently? Yeah, and I wish I remembered what they said they paid because someone told me and it was ridiculous. I remember thinking like, whoa, it was like thousands. And I remember just thinking like, wow. But then it's relative, isn't it? Because obviously Nike are worth millions and millions, like billions possibly. Yeah. Like, so it's that whole thing of like, they can afford it. So it's really difficult. I mean, I do think like, I mean, if someone asks me for a real, I can't remember what it is. I think I asked for like 150 or something like that. I know you're gonna be like, oh God, that's not enough. But again, it's that whole thing of like, I try to think of like, what could they probably actually afford? Like, and it not be way too overinflated. But again, you're right. It probably doesn't actually fit in with any of the other industry standards. But so it must be really difficult. So is that why you just do it on a case by case basis generally? Yeah. And also why I've not worked with any pole brands ever. Right. Yeah. So do you just buy all your own pole clothes? Um, if somebody says, hey, I want to send you something, I'll be like, cool, thanks. And I'll take it, but I'll post it if I wear it and tag them. It's you quite easy them. as well because I'm posting poll videos anyway. So if I wear right. it, I tag them and it's not actually any any more time or effort on my part. So if they want to right. send, I've, I've stopped asking for money because it's not worth it. Also, if someone's going to offer me a hundred pounds, I'd actually rather just not bother with contracts and having to send them contacts, content to like tick off and whatever. I'd rather just do the damn thing for free and do it my way. So to be, to be fair, I mean, I'm, I'm really, again, like so bad. Like I keep it very casual. Like if anyone is wants to work with me or whatever, and wants to do ads on polos or whatever, it's very much a casual basis. You pay the money. I send, I can send you over my stats and stuff if you want them. Most people generally just see how other businesses have done on it. Like, I mean, yeah, like uh, some, some of the brands that we've worked with and stuff like Grip and Glows is really, really well out of it. But I don't mind because Lisa is lovely. She always pays me. She never ever moans about the price. She gets loads of followers from it. You know, it, it's yeah. really helped her business. And, you know, I think it's a small price to pay when you're going to get a lot of people from it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, mm -hmm. I can only I can only imagine how much. I mean, I get sorry. I know this is so stupid. That I keep asking this, but I'm just so intrigued by it. So, like, say for example, I know Tampax contacted you and said, "Hey, would you do a giveaway? We're going to give away a year's supply of Tampax. What what sort of price you charge that? Like five thousand for that? I'd probably go in if they wanted a reel and three stories or something. I'd probably go mm. in at three grand and probably accept two. Right. That's amazing though, isn't it? And how long would you spend on that? So let's let's say that 2,000 pounds you've made, how many hours are you spending on that content? So I think that's one thing we don't think about a lot actually when it comes to, and I'm gonna ask you a bit more about that in a second. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd probably spend a day a week creating content for my own, my own socials anyway. Um, and if I'm doing a, if I'm doing a paid campaign like that, it's back and forth, back and forth negotiation. Then it's read through the contract, make sure there's no funny business in there, sign it, send it back or more negotios. Then it's okay, please send me the brief. Or if you don't have a brief, I'll come up with something. I'll then send them like a script and a idea, like a concept for what I'm going to film. Then they agree that I'll then go and film it, do a voiceover or do whatever it is that I need to be doing with that, write a caption, make sure that everything there is in there that, that needs to be from the email, film the stories, put it into Dropbox, send it to them. They then can say, actually, I'm not sure about this or change that or whatever. Then I go I change it, send it back tick everything off, post the thing, spend a good half hour at least afterwards, making sure if anybody comments or, you know, I'm, I'm sort of on it and I'm, I'm commenting and nice. yeah, so quite a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's the thing, like, I think people don't really appreciate that. So I want to talk to you about, cause a lot of your content and I can tell, cause I've, I've spoken to you about it before. You spend a lot of time creating this content. You've got voiceover content. You've got, you know, your poll content. You've got, um, you know, talking about relevant subjects and sometimes it'll be talking about posts you've seen where you then, um, we'll then talk about it and I can see obviously you've got to do your green screen stuff and all that sort of stuff. You know, how much time do you spend per post? What would you say your average is? About an hour, three hours, five hours? 
It depends. Um, a lot of the time I spend is on trying to think about how to say things in a succinct and um, like easily digestible and understandable, but also very catchy way, which yeah. is a lot. And if you're not in the right headspace for it, it's impossible. <laughs> I right? Imagine. I mean, you must feel that as well, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's more just like being careful of what I say, because I'm like, I want it to be clear and concise, but I also don't want it to offend anybody. Like, and I, I guess mm -hmm. that's something that you must oh, be yeah. really careful of as well. Really, really careful of. And um, I feel like the internet is becoming more and more toxic and it's actually harder to it's it's harder to make everybody happy. Not that anyone can ever make everybody happy, but right. I feel like everything I think I want to say, I then always play some weird devil's advocate in my head. And I'm like, I didn't used to do this two or three years ago. This is a new thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, and how careful do you have to be? Do you, Have you had any, like, instance that you're willing to talk about where you've said something and people have just taken it the wrong way or they, they've misconstrued your words? Yeah, I had a go at hen parties and baby showers once, and that did not go down well. I still stand by everything that I say, but yeah, it's just like people just get offended. And sometimes, like, you know, I'm like, you know what, I get it. I see why you're offended, but I'm still not going to baby showers and giving people money for babies that I'm never going to get back. Like, it's not happening. Sorry. Yeah. And, <sighs> But yeah, that's also, your opinion, though. It's just your opinion. It doesn't mean you're trying to say yeah. no one, no one can do baby showers now because Tara said you're not allowed to. No one's saying that. You're just saying Literally. it's not for you. Yeah, and also I think oh. people put influencers, but also celebrities and anybody that they kind of like and listen to on such a pedestal that they get so mm. upset if they say anything that doesn't that they don't agree with. And I'm like, have some critical thinking and be able to separate like not everything that I think you're going to agree with. And a lot of people will start a DM to me and say, Hey, like normally I agree with everything you say, but, but. I didn't like this. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want you to agree with everything that I say. I want you to think about things and be like, actually, no, I don't think that because this, like we all need to still be thinking for ourselves, not just like blindly listening to people that we think are right. Right. I don't know. This is me off, as well. Like, <laughs> I know it sounds terrible, but if, if you don't say stuff and, and I want to get your, and I hope you'll be honest, like, do you find that like, if you talk about stuff that again, you know, might be a little bit controversial, it's going to incite conversation, which is going to incite engagement. Like, do you mm -hmm. find like it's trying to find a subject that you can talk about that, like you said, will cause a bit of like back and forward between people without it turning into arguments? Because this is a balance that, as you might have known from Tuesday Topics, when I used to do those, never again. But like, <laughs> when we used to do those, that was really the idea of it, was to incite conversation. Not arguments, but debate. But the problem is, it's almost like people can't debate online. They can only argue, it seems. <laughs> yeah. it, uh, And they use it as like a... People will use arguments and comments to just take out their anger on strangers. And it makes right. me really sad. Like, I'll read stuff and I'm like don't don't say that like what are you gaining from this but yeah I, I mean yeah I do it on purpose sometimes I want to be controversial so that people discuss things and it makes me yeah. sad to see that some people can't discuss things like normal human beings or will say really horrible hurtful things so I spend right. quite a lot of time especially if something goes a bit viral a lot of time sifting through comments and deleting things if they're really horribly sexist or racist or you know things like that I'll get rid of them so that mm -hmm. nobody else has to read that I'm quite I'm quite immune to this shit now like I can I can read it and it doesn't really upset me that much but I'm so worried about how somebody on the receiving end of a comment like that will feel that I try and go through and just comb out the really bad stuff. But then you've got the people that will then comment again and say, why are you silencing me? Oh, well, I then I just delete that, that as well. Right. And there's nothing <laughs> they can do about it. <laughs> yeah. You just have to restrict their profile, I guess. But like, yeah, um, exactly. It's that whole thing of like, I just, the, you're never going to win in that situation. It's really funny as well, actually restricting people's profiles. If anyone gives me like a little whiff, 
of negativity maybe i'm like i'm not going to remove you or block you because maybe i just totally misconstrued what you said that's fine so i'll restrict their profile and then when they come back with another comment that's maybe worse or it's a bit more mean they're like yeah i stuck it to them and i leave that comment there without and they will just think why is no one likes my comment it's because no one can fucking see it bitch that's why so they good. don't realize Oh, it's so good. It's such it's a good just, function. It's just the best feature, isn't it? I love it. I mean, to be honest, yeah. it's one of those things like, have you ever been through a period of your life where you felt the need to comment on people's stuff with like a bit of a comeback if you didn't agree with something? Because I know I definitely did. I've been through my toxic stage and now I will only comment stuff if I think it's a nice comment, I'm giving them a compliment or it's like some love. I'll debate, but I'll make it nicey, nicey. I'll never ever be like, no, blah, blah, blah. But back in the day, I used to. And mm. um, now I'm just like, nah, if it's not going to contribute anything nice, I'm just not going to bother. It's not worth it. Yeah. Have, have you ever been through that stage where you would be a bit toxic? Not We've all really. Been there. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I felt I had one experience where somebody said something on like what I didn't really realize was like a very toxic men's activist, men's rights activist, like profile <laughs> said something that I didn't agree with. And so I went into the comments and I said, yeah, but have you thought about it this way? And you know, maybe you should consider X, Y, Z. And oh my God, were this army of men destroying me after that. And I was like, I'm never doing that again. Like all, all I did was try and offer some sort of, you know, something. And that's actually why I say quite a lot on my own like profile and stories. I'm like, be nice to each other. Because if yeah. somebody is saying something that you don't agree with, but they're just, you know, they're being, they're asking a question, they're being, you know, they're being informative. It's not like, fuck you, stupid slut. It's, it's like, you know, content that's, <laughs> that's interesting and informative. Then I'm like, don't be a dick. Like, right. just, just don't, because it's not nice. Yeah, <sighs> it's that whole thing as well of like, you know, when you, see, this was the thing, one of the things as well with Tuesday topics I used to always hate was when people would comment with genuine questions. They'd be like, hey, does anyone know like this way? And people would be like, oh, educate yourself. Or, you know, we're not here to educate, but it's like, yeah. guys come on they're trying to ask in the nicest way just for you to educate them and you're like no yeah. we don't we won't educate you but it's like well that's kind of the point of this post <laughs> so why yeah. are you here if you don't want to educate yeah. people maybe move on to another post it's just people on the internet be fucking crazy and actually yes. that's one of the things i i'd written down that i want to talk to you about was um you are so good at dealing with the nasty comments and obviously you get being a feminism page you post a lot about um reproductive rights all these sorts of things that men love to comment on when they really should not be but a lot of men will comment on your page and they'll say some nasty shit and i see your comments back to them and you're so good but does it it must it must hurt it can't be nice it mu you must have some sort of repercussion from it uh occasionally it depends depends where i mean if i'm in my luteal phase and i'm feeling like absolutely shit my hormones are all over the place then i uh -huh. tend to like try not to do that but other than that like i think it it's one of the things i kind of thrive off now i'm like you're oh, gonna really? say something dumb you're really dumb i'm far more intelligent than you this is only going to go one way. So I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> you want to play? On. Let's play. <laughs> yeah. And it's just funny how, because I'd noticed there was one, I think it was just the other day I saw that new, new York comment on it was just like, you were kind of having it backward and forward and then he just went straight to do a jibe about how you looked or something. You were like, really? <laughs> is that yeah, the best you can like, do? Like, okay. It's like, come on, like, tell me you lost an argument without telling me you lost an argument. It's like, come on, like, come up with something better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So what do you do to, um, like, avoid your mental health being absolutely torn to fucking shreds? Because let's be honest, like, it does. Like, for me, that's why I stopped using topics, because I just couldn't deal with, like, mm. trash shit it used to give me i was like oh so i just got rid of it because my mental health wasn't doing well with it and that's why i don't really post anything controversial is because i don't want that mental health here what do you do to avoid that or what do you do to help i don't i don't really i don't know i mean sometimes i'll just go for a weekend without using social media or i'll that's stop good. talking about a certain thing or i have 
I have turned off the comments a few times on posts when I'm like, you know what, I can't be bothered to deal with this anymore. So, right. but I'm kind of, I mean, for the most part, I, I think maybe I'm lucky. You know what? Maybe it's the only reason that I can do what I do is that it really doesn't affect me that much. Um, That's good. It does occasionally, but not enough to, but I also, somebody asked me recently, like, you know, would you, would you tell the young, would you, you know, go into like a school and talk about influencing, like it's a cool thing and like people should get into it. And I was like, no, right. <laughs> not really, especially not in my like field. If you want to, you know, take on the world and fight like the feminist fight, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. It really kind of sucks. You have to be like a really, really strong person to even embark on that and i wouldn't you know i don't want people to feel like it's an easy mission and and that you know they're not gonna get shit for it i don't know for sure do you like when when you're doing all these posts and stuff and these these men are commenting do you ever wonder like do you ever just have those doubts where you're like is this really worth like the hassle of this crap? Do you know what I mean? Do you ever get like, cause I know you posted once, didn't you? I remember you posted once and you were like, you're feeling really anxious. You didn't want to post and you were like, does anyone else get this? What is it that's causing that? Do you think it's these men that are commenting this horrible stuff that make you anxious like that? No, I think the only, the only time I get anxious about what I'm posting is when I sort of lose track of the mission and I don't really know why I'm talking about things anymore and whether it's relevant and whether people are going to vibe with it. And that's, I'm mostly concerned about losing, losing the audience, like trust and things from my audience because I've sure. sort of gone like on a weird tangent. Um, yeah, the, no, the, the trolls in the comments are like, yeah, they're not, they're not in the forefront of my mind really like at all. And um, what, what would you, if someone said to you, so what is the mission? What would you describe the mission as? Obviously, like, feminism being at the forefront of it, of course, but, like, what would you say your mission is for social media? The mission is to raise awareness of, of, of topics that I think are important um, to for women, for men, for life, for me, because I'm in a position where I feel like I can and I mean, the child free by choice one is the sort of new one that not that many people are talking about that people yeah. have found this kind of novelty of like, wow, people are finally talking about this and dr like driving a big no, wedge in people being like. I, that's my favorite content you make. You know, the one you were like, oh, <laughs> here's, uh, get ready with me. To, it was like, get ready with me whilst I tell you about all the reasons why I should have kids or something. And then you're just there like saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then but, that that oh my god that one troll that's called like la nonna or something and she was just like oh my god she's terrible she's like a grandmother i think it's some guy that's hiding behind a fake profile that's like pretending to be a grandmother she was like oh you know like you were born to have kids like you know your your life is wasted if you don't have kids and just i love it i love listening and watching it it's happen. just so just funny like, but it I is, made you so angry. <laughs> it is definitely uh, something that's becoming more normal now. I mean, God, like mm -hmm. literally only what five, ten years ago, like people discussing that they don't, they just don't want children. They want to go traveling and they want to live their best life. That was never really a thing. Like I still feel like it's still a little bit like that now. But do you find like, I mean, it must be a really hard discussion to to have. Do you ever get people coming to you with, and again, trigger warning, um, you know, trigger warning for anyone about reproductive issues, please. Um, you know, women who can't have kids, for example. Do you ever get that comment where people are like, there are women out there who can't have children and wish they could, like, and you're not using, you know, your reproductive system for what it was meant for. Ah. Do you know what I mean? Do you ever get that sort of angle? That that one's that one's less common. What I do okay. what I do get quite a lot is people saying like, "Oh, you're not a real woman," or like you you know your life's like, "What is your life's purpose?" or what or whatever. If you don't have kids, and then people, I'll share that kind of stuff, and people will respond saying, "Wait, so because I'm infertile, I don't I don't get a life's mission, or like I shouldn't be alive? Like, what does that right. what does that mean for me? Like, this is not the argument that that they think they're making. It's just really right. mean." Um, you know, and I feel, I feel for them really. I feel for that. I feel 
for them the most when I'm sharing stuff like that because for it's sure. just really unfair to even for people to be saying that. But the, but the problem is they're so dim that they don't even think they don't think about these things. The people no. commenting and just being mean, they're just it's just it's lack of intelligence. <laughs> Yeah, but it's also that thing of like, yeah, we, we're still like, even nowadays, like you should never assume that people don't have kids because they don't want them, like, because they might not be able to have them, right? Yeah. And that's always, because I remember like, it's that whole conversation that you have with people, you're like, oh, are you guys going to have kids? It's just such a natural question to ask, isn't it? So much so that I have to be really careful because it used to be something that I'd always ask people, be like, oh, do you guys want mm -hmm. kids? So now, oh, I will sometimes, if I've gotten to know someone enough, I'll be like, oh, do you guys think you'd want kids in the future? Because then they can say, no, we don't want kids, and they can just leave it there. But people ask me and Mitch all the time, and I, I'm very mm -hmm. similar to you. Mine's just like, no, we don't want kids. Because to be really honest with you, we don't like kids. Like, we love, uh, like, well, we've got a niece, love her. She's the sweetest little thing. But I only like kids when it's on my turn, when I can hand them back. And when I can mm -hmm. be like, bye, <laughs> see ya. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But like when they're screaming on a plane behind me, do I like kids at that point? No, I fucking don't. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God, this is like the worst thing to happen to me ever. But it's personal choice, you know? And um, I just feel like it's definitely a hot topic to talk about on social media. What other hot topics do you have that you talk about? So you talk about obviously um, feminism, which is a big one for the men always commenting on. You've got the kids thing. What's your other main main topics that you tend to find give um, you good engagement? That gets good engagement? I don't really know. I mean, the other things that I'm passionate about that I like to try and talk about are sort of poll in a sense somehow of like, you know, every now and then I'll post something poll related, but it's also kind of more to do with feminism around poll really. And like the uh -huh. attitudes around poll and things like that. So I'll do stuff like that. Um, menstrual cycles, that content also I post about that quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much, pretty much main, what I talk about things. on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so what would your like, top tips be for someone who's like trying to get into doing what you do someone who wants to build up their following maybe get into doing influencing what would your main tips be first thing would be to start looking at content that you're enjoying in a different way so find people that you think are absolutely smashing out on social media and you love their vibe and and their energy and have a look at what kind of videos they're making, how they're cutting things together, are they using voiceovers, like what is it that makes their content special and what makes you want to follow them and save stuff. Start using the Instagram save folders and TikTok and whatever, save stuff so you can have a look back at it. Then sit yourself down and make some sort of mission. The mission can be, I just wanna look hot and I want bikini brands to send me free stuff or I want to showcase my epic photography because I love using film cameras and I think there's space for that. Or it can be, I'm a, you know, I want to be like one of the main spokespeople in the pole world. And I want to, you know, I want to, I want to grow the pole industry and I want to go down that route. Think, think of that, then write down all the different ideas you have for content. <laughs> write it all down in a big notebook, and then from there you can refer to that and also refer to the content style. Then get yourself a ring light, get yourself a tripod, get yourself all the bits. Think about lighting, think about all the things that are gonna make your content stand out and make it the highest quality possible, and just start. And don't worry about posting times, don't worry about frequency, just be as consistent as you can and just start. And then once you start, figure out what people are enjoying. If something takes off, if more people are commenting and more people are liking it, then make something very similar and go again and again and again until more and more people are enjoying your content and you figure out some sort of niche for yourself. Whew. That was and good. What, what's, what's, yeah, that was really, that was actually really good. I mean, what, what do you think about, so you were saying about like, do, if something goes viral, create something similar. Do you ever see when people have maybe like created a video and then they basically try doing the same thing almost over and over and over and you're like, okay, babe, we get it. Give us something fresh now because not everyone. And then you notice that one's had like a million and it's like, 
500,000 and then they're kind of doing it again and again and it's just yeah. people have seen it now but what's your advice there I guess what I what I mean by that is don't make exactly the same video just in a different location or something but right. um for example the first time I posted a poll video with like some facts or some stats over it everyone was like this is cool format and I could kind of see that because there were the people watching it because they liked my polls girls and there were the people watching it because they liked the information and, and the education. And I was like, great, two birds, one stone, let's do the same thing, but with something else or talking about some other topic or something similar. And I still do those. Like, I mean, you know, you've seen obviously and, and well, a lot of other people started style. doing them and it's like, awesome. Yeah. Exactly. And it's because I messaged yeah. you and I said, how do I mm -hmm. do this green screen one? And I tried that and that was one of, do you know what's funny? I need to, I actually want to do one uh, today or tomorrow, another green screen one because um, that was one of the most popular ones, but as well, I'd taken a lot of inspiration from your Instagram. I learned a lot just from looking at your Instagram because even like the um, posts with the um, the speaking, like the the voiceovers and the the captions with it, they do so much better. Like, and it's but I've tried to put my own little twists on it because I know yours are obviously very like inspirational and stuff. Whereas I'm kind of keeping on brand with the making yeah. people laugh because it's kind of what yeah. I enjoy doing. It's I so love good. I laugh. love it. Thank you. Yeah. But I really, I really do. I, I remember looking at yours and thinking, I see how that works because it does. It makes you read it, doesn't it? Because the, the words mm -hmm. are coming up in it. And I remember seeing that you put, I know this is such a small detail, but little things. And I was like, you'd put your voice over it, but you'd actually put the wording directly over your poll video. And I remember thinking like, it's not hindered me being able to look at the poll video. But before that, I would have been like, oh, don't put it over my body because then they won't be able to see what I'm doing. But of course they can fucking see what I'm doing. It's just words. So now mm -hmm. I put it directly over my, in the middle and it looks really cute. And I'm like, it's funny that I would never, so when you said a second ago about like, go to people's pages, see what they're doing, take inspiration from that. That's pretty much what I did when I saw your page and I was looking through and when we met in Thailand and I then started following you, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is some really cool content. So definitely like, you know, even some of the biggest like people that we follow, right? They're going to be taking inspiration mm -hmm. from other people, getting ideas. So I definitely agree with that. What would your main don'ts be? Like if you would say, listen, don't be the person that does this or this or this, what would it be? Mm. Buying followers? I mean, oh yeah, definitely not. Like def definitely not. People will see right through that. Um, immediately um yeah don't don't rush things I think as well like if something's not well lit or the quality of the camera is a little bit off or something or you know it's not then just do it again <laughs> I think um yeah but other than that I don't really think I don't think there are that many don'ts. I think you'll figure out the don'ts quite quickly when you start posting things and you start you start doing it. Um, yeah, I think. What do you What do you think? Have you got any yeah, don'ts? Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I mean, I always say to people, listen, don't wait, don't waste your money on mm. paying for adverts for for just your yeah, page unless you're not. selling yeah. something. And yeah. actually, I've had a few of these coming up recently where it says sponsored and it's just a poll video. I'm like, yeah. I'm like don't waste your money. It's so expensive. Yeah. Like, it's too much like so don't pay don't pay followers because again it's not only going to likely get your account banned but you, you're yeah. going to lose them all anyway um yeah and it's just like the don't don't post with loads of crap behind you like try and tidy your poll area yeah. make it as aesthetically pleasing i guess um yeah yeah i mean i guess a newer don't i would give would maybe be like don't don't give the trolls exactly what they want and don't don't rise to it feel free to troll mm -hmm. back a little bit yeah. and and yeah. don't but don't give them the anger that they so desperately crave because as soon as you do you will open the yeah. floodgates to them doing it more to you and other people yeah. joining them so just don't do it because as soon as they spot that or smell that bit of weakness they'll be on you <laughs> yeah. yeah no You're i mean right. there's not loads of don'ts i guess but i mean they're they're my main ones but yeah Listen, I could talk to you about the social media all day. I feel like what you're doing on your social media is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this Thank with you. me. Can you just tell everyone where they can find you, where they can um, find you online, websites, what, all that sort of stuff? Give give us the blurb now. <laughs> yep. So my Instagram is at Move with Tara. 
My TikTok is at Tara Margulies. The Understand Your Cycle website is www.understandyourcycle.com. Um, and I also run pole retreats. Oh, yeah. So that's www.abithapolretreats.com. Um, but you can find all of that on my Instagram anyway. So come going? and play. It's going so well. I'm so happy. I mean, I can't, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm Do you have many spaces nervous left? and excited. We have a few spaces left, but really not very many anymore. And um, yeah, Jenny and I just were trying to sort out groups and, and things because the, the level is actually pretty high. We're surprised by how, how, like, how many people who've been polling for like eight to 10 years are, are coming, which is awesome. So we've got, yeah, we've got two groups. There's going to be like a beginner intermediate group and then an advanced group. So yeah, we're putting all that together at the moment. And um, yeah, it's super exciting. When is it? Remind me, when, what date it's is it? It's September 14th to 18th. Well, I mean, anyone listening to this now, this will be going out obviously way before then. So it might be worth getting in contact, drop Tara a message if there's some spaces, yeah. go and check out the cam. And if not, go. is there an Instagram page they can follow for next there year's is. one? What's the Instagram Abitha page? Abitha Pole Retreats. Abitha Pole Retreats. So make sure you go and check it out. Thank you so much, Tara. I appreciate having you on and um, I'll Thanks, speak Dan. to you very soon. <laughs> See you, babe. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I don't know about you, but some of these stats that we talked about with Tara's day absolutely blew my mind and it really opened my mind to how behind we are in the pole industry when it comes to influencing. So let me know how you got on with this episode and let me know if you learned something. I know I definitely did and I will see you next week. Bye. That was all the tea that you can get this week. Join me next time right here. It's the weekly tea.